What's going on guys, welcome back to 100% Chelsea and welcome to your match build-up show for Fulham versus Chelsea. A five past two kickoff on Sunday, obviously it's me and Scott uh, as per usual and we are here to dissect and build up to the South West London derby, the duck and orange derby as you would like to call it or I prefer to call it the Waitrose derby, obviously leave your thoughts down in the comments section below but should we get straight into it mate? Yep. It's Chelsea versus Tottenham, 2 nil win. Both of us were bricking it beforehand, and we went and won 2 0. Yeah. And uh, you were saying about how when we have pressure on us, we normally seem to not do as well mm-hmm. when there's no pressure on us, but somehow we managed to make Tottenham do a Tottenham. I mean, I mean, to be honest, I don't think it was us that did it. I think it was Tottenham. True, but. Spurs it up. Spurs are falling apart again, the song was going. And uh, they weren't wrong! <laughs> but. Look, I was I was happy with the result. Pedro was outstanding he that game. He was he was very good. I thought that uh, for me, pretty much the whole team was to an mm. extent. I thought that even those players under a bit of criticism, i.e. Alonso, uh, Dave, um, they they performed well. They performed to a decent level. Mm. Uh, I only had one complaint, and that was Kovacic. I thought that for the most part he was he was okay in parts, but I thought that he was. Mm. A bit, not sl- he wasn't slow. He was a bit. You could say this about the whole team, to be fair. But the pa- passing was a bit off to an extent. The uh, the some parts were really, really wayward. But apart mm. from that, I thought it was a good performance. I I mean I I th- I thought it was pretty solid. Yeah, I th- I think Kovacic is one where the, the point you've raised, obviously, you weren't very happy with. I think a lot of people would disagree with you. I think a lot of people were very pleased with his performance. I I don't think he was all that. I think he was solid. But I don't think he was stand out. No, I, I can see why people think he was solid. And as I said, he, he did something like his, his hold up of the ball, as as we've come to expect, is good. Um, his movement when he has the ball mm. is good. But I think that the main thing that we rely on with Kovacic, apart from holding the ball, is part is, is passing it. Mm. That, like we require that for many of our midfielders. Mm. Otherwise. You you have a complete gap in in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the pitch between mm. your defence and your uh, front line. So I think that in, in terms of that aspect, he was a bit poor in terms of his passing. Um, but apart from that, I think he was solid, but mm. a bit unremarkable. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, we'll, we'll move on from that. We 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 won the game. That's what matters. Three points on the board. Top four race is still in there. We are there just about. Yeah, we are a point. A point. If that, if I get get up get it up now, lad. We are exactly. Three yeah, points, no. but we got okay. game in hand, and yeah, Arsenal so still got to play Tottenham. I, I, you know what? I, at that game, I know Arsenal got to play Tottenham. Considering we have a game in hand as well, I wouldn't mind them winning that. What Arsenal? Yeah, because I think it, it wouldn't it draw Tottenham in, and if we um, won both yes, our games would. in hands, we go on level on points with Arsenal. We, no, we have one game in hand, not both our games. Yeah, in but hand. we win. We, we, we play this game. Oh yeah, if, if, yeah, if, we, if we win, we go level on points with Arsenal, and Arsenal. Are they Arsenal any big games? I can't remember. Arsenal have uh, after Tottenham. Arsenal are playing uh, Rennes in the uh, Europa League. United as well That's in March. Be a good game. Uh, are they playing Liverpool? They play Liverpool twice. They, I think they're playing Liverpool in May. I know they've double played Liverpool twice they already. They haven't really gotten that hard a run. If you look at some of the, nah. I mean, Leicester City could be hard, but it would depend you've, got, they, you've got David Brent as a manager. Of course, it's going to be hard. It would depend whether they turn up. Uh, Watford again, like. They've been having a good season, but then they got battered 5 0 by Liverpool, which yeah. didn't turn up at all. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see. Obviously, this is now the run in. We have 10 games left of the Premier League season. Christ. It's very tasty indeed. Hopefully, we'll get top four. But obviously, we have uh, spoken about you know the top four race already yep. on several occasions. We'll, we'll talk about it again when there's much more of a talking point about it. Probably about like five games to go. It's going to be interesting to see where we're at. Yeah. But um, all in, let's crack on. Let's get straight into the press conference from today. Uh, obviously, Maurizio Sarri and his comments ahead of the game, and he is still undecided about whether to recall Kepa to face Fulham. I, I don't know how to feel about this. I mean, we've got the comments here in full. Uh, he says, uh, we're very happy with Willie because we now know very well that he's able to play in a very difficult match as well, which probably doesn't really yeah. say a lot. He says, um, then he's also said that he's, he's sure that in one of the next two matches, so this one or Kiev, uh, that... Um, Kepa will come in, which leads me to believe it'll be this one because yeah. Willie will play against Giv, yeah. as he's tend to do, tended to do, apart from against Malmo. Um, but yeah, it 
to be honest, the, the press conference was kind of just a, a so-so press conference you kind of expect from a manager. It was a, it was a bit mm. of, I wouldn't say nothing, but it was a bit of this, bit of that, nothing really conclusive. Yeah, well, I mean, we don't have any injury concerns as well. No, which is that's a, a good thing. Which is good, which means we have a full squad heading into this game as which well. Which means he has no... no uh, Reason not to play Hudson Doy. Yeah, I mean, who is the cheek? Is that who you're going to be starting? No, I do They, they. I think at the very least, Lost the cheek needs to be because you can see he's giving him minutes with the likes of coming on against um, Tottenham. Yeah. Coming on against City. Yeah. Uh, coming on against Malmo, I believe. Mm. I think that you can see he wants to give him minutes. Hudson Doy, it's a bit more meh because you just don't really know at this point. <laughs> like you just don't know. Like there are games when he should have played and he didn't. And it, we don't know bit, why. But it's just a bit... Mm. <laughs> Mate, go yeah, on. I, I, I think the very least, uh, Loftus-Cheek has to play. Yeah, Loftus-Cheek has to start for me. I think he offers that dynamism in midfield we've always been craving over the past couple of Plus games. Plus the uh, oh, full midfield is... Compl- do I, uh, uh, apart from... Wait, what? It's, I was going to say it's a bit useless. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Apart from two players, one of which they was having a very poor season, it's a very... Go on. Average midfield. So, John McCosseri and... Who's having it? And Tom Kearney. Oh, I mean, Tom Kearney, I think. I think Tom well. Kearney's a he's, decent he's, player. He's a decent player. I could take him or leave him, though. I'm not completely... I'm, I'm not saying he'd get anywhere near the Chelsea I'm just saying in terms of... He could play mm. for... I think he could play for a Newcastle, a West Ham to a certain extent if, if some of the players in the team weren't performing quite as well. Yeah. A... Uh, even a Leicester to an extent if they didn't have Ndidi and... I've forgotten the other one they play. Mendy. Mm. Yes, uh, Ndidi. Uh, and then there's someone else I'm thinking of but for that sort of team or like a Burnley for example mm. uh, lower table sort of side but it's not really struggling for relegation He, mm. I could see him playing for but yeah but I don't think he's, 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 he doesn't strike me as anything special he's just very he's there he's a, what is he, I'm a central midfielder cool that's what it feels like I don't I don't. he, he was he was very good in the championship last year but I, I don't think he was he's not been a standard season John yeah, Mikel I think that, that, it's, I, I'm going to put this out there. Play, saying you're playing well in the championship means absolutely nothing. I'm going to put that out there now. Um, uh, Timu Puki, I think, is second in the in the scoring charts. So and Charlie he failed Aust- at Celtic so Charlie- and he failed at uh, Schalke. Okay, so Charlie Austin playing really well in the championship didn't mean anything, did it? What about Jamie Vardy? How was he playing in the Premier League? Played in the championship as well, didn't he? Yeah, but how's he playing in the Premier League? He's all right. He did solid. He's now got, obviously, injury prone, but come on, he started well. Considering pretty much every it's been top half team was linked with him. Mm-hmm. Same with Ings. Ings, yeah, I mean, but no, but Ings didn't make the and But Ings, up. I will admit, it, injuries did hamper him, but at the yeah. same time. Vardy did. Vardy, Vardy, Vardy did, Vardy, which okay. is fair enough. Cool. Sam, there's my argument. Done. There's one example. I've, I've, given you, I've given you two, and you're going, yeah, but where's Charlie Austin now? No. Yeah, Charlie Char- Austin was good. People wanted it. I like Charlie Austin. Peter Crouch. I don't know if he started in the championship, but I'm just saying Peter Crouch because he's come back up now. There are there are certainly players that can make the step up, but I think just I think my point is saying that he's good in the championship doesn't mean anything until they show in the Premier League. Mm, is that what like Tammy Abraham then walked by that? That that's my point, is that he needs from all that we've seen, granted it was a bit it was playing for Swansea, but at the same time mm. he started the season quite well, but then dropped off and wasn't played. Mm. Um so that's why I am I'm not saying that I don't want him ever to play for Chelsea. I think he could be a good secondary option. I don't think he is... I think the hype around him is a little bit too much. A not bit, is it? A little bit too much. I'm not saying it's Arsenal levels. <laughs> not the I will cut Arsenal. No. Or Gwendouzi. He's a good player, but... Can, try, can, no, no, no. Try, no, 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 no. Trying to say that he's going to be the next Pogba or Kante is massively, massively step overstepping the mark. I think you've been reading Twitter too much. I didn't, I didn't say he's going to be the next Pablo Cantor. I think he's a very good player. No, that's what I'm saying. He's, that's what I'm saying. He's a good player, but trying to say that he is... Like, that, that some Arsenal fans have gone, oh, he's going to be the next Cantor. He's going to be the next Pogba. He's had half a season in the Premier League, I mean, for Christ's no, sake. Sorry, the next Kiki he's going to be the next Cantor and the next Pogba. They're, they're two very different players. You know, I know. Pog, 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 Pogba's more Yaya Torre, Kante's more Makalele. If you want to balance that out, I mean, Yaya Torre was a dynamic, attacking, athletic, physical, number 10 central midfielder type thing who could do the lot. Kante is um, Ingolo Kante. No one's Ingolo I think basically Kante. what the, he was getting out of the fan, I saw this, basically he's going to be both of them moulded into one. Mm, yeah, yeah. And David Luiz, if you include the haircut. Yeah. Fuck it, why not put, put that in there? But I mean, uh, like, I mean, Tammy Abraham, back onto that, is a very interesting topic. I mean, I remember speaking to Nini a couple of days ago, and he was speaking about uh, Tammy Abraham and John Terry's comments, mm. and he was saying, uh, you know, 
John John Terry's kind of sat there and he says, "Look, like he is a massive player. Like he's mm. he's a big game player. He's people talk about. You know, what I was saying a couple of days ago that Chelsea really miss a shit, but we miss a dickhead." <laughs> We don't he have to strike me as that type of person. Apparently, on the pitch, he's a massive prick, and I love that. When I say <laughs> that, he's, when he was there, like John Terry, be sat there next to Ivanovic. Obviously, this is when he was training with the first team, so they weren't in their prime, but they were still half decent. He'd be with, a, he'd be training with them. He'd be Gary Cahill. Both of them be sat there going, "Oh shit, we're in for a bit of a game here, lads." And he'd, he'd be physical. He'd be, he'd be yeah. a big presence. And I think uh, when he came on towards the back end of that 15, 16 season, you know, had him, Loftus Cheek, Ola Aina, they're all playing games because our season was done. You know, he, he, he was unfortunate not to put opportunities away, but he got in front of goal, he, he got the movements right, he was he was he played with no fear, he was superb. I honestly think he, he could, I think he'd be a solid second choice option next year. Yeah, a second choice, but that's, that's, that's my point, is that I'm not saying he's not good, I'm not saying that he hasn't mm. got the qualities to be a Chelsea striker, I'm not saying that he hasn't got the qualities, even to be a starting striker, I'm not saying he has that, but I think that as it tends to be with a few young players, and this is not just Chelsea, this is, as I said, Arsenal, this goes to Liverpool, this goes to United, this goes to City, this goes to every club. Mm. There are certain, even as we're about to talk about maybe a little bit later, or no, no, check the video uh, that will be out yesterday, Sesson Young for Fulham. Out yesterday? You mean out today? Oh. See, no, you're doing it again, Scott. No, you're if right, this, is going out, this is going out Sunday morning. This, no, this is going out Saturday night. What's it's going out Sunday morning? No. This you is, said this it was going to have a sunset. Show. No, said I said was... parts of it will go out Sunday morning. The main show goes out well, on Saturday today, night. Then. Um, Idiot. Mug. Tit. Earlier today. Um, but yeah, I think that the hype around some players is a bit more than... One is just one word, uh, wrong phrase, the wrong word. A bit more than is necessary right now. For lack of a better phrase. Hmm... I, I, I personally look, for me I think I agree in terms of Tammy Abraham needs a stint in the Premier League he needs to go to a team which isn't going to get relegated but he can still have an get he gets he won't get ahead of Rondon but exactly. he gets well Rondon's on loan yeah they'll, they'll make that permanent probably they ain't going to have a striker <laughs> my Dwight guy will come back and do bits <laughs> how are they going <laughs> to how they've never trusted him, I don't really understand it. Well, do I go? Because yeah. he's another one of those players that does really well in the championship but can't make it. He didn't do well in the Prem. Like this, he got a run of games, did really well, and then dropped. Was it Crystal Palace, wasn't it? Where it, was with, it was with Palace, and then with Newcastle, he got a run of games. He actually did quite well. And then he just got dropped, and then sent out on loan. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, mean, I mean, personally, I think Tammy, I don't think Newcastle is the best. I'd say a Burnley. Burnley would be a good option, but then again, he's got your head of Barnes. Which is Wood. Wood. He, Wood, he might not, but he, I think he's up there. Crouch. <laughs> <laughs> all, all due respect to Peter. Uh, um, uh, yeah. And our oh, folks is left. I forgot folks is left. But yeah, those three. Yeah. I think you'll get ahead of them somehow. Would no. And Barnes. Would he get, oh, Ashley Barnes, he'd definitely get ahead of. Would he? Yeah. He needs to be. I don't bit, know. I, said, I feel like Sean Dyche needs to have a real love for Ashley Barnes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you're looking at the Premier League table right now, he'd probably get into. I could see him doing well at Southampton. If you land him out there. That is a superb shout, shout Mr. Page. Bournemouth. Especially if Wilson ends up leaving, which I can see. Yeah, but it's not guaranteed. No, but I can see. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, at this point, I could see someone taking King. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, not necessarily in the Prem, but a, I don't know, a team in Spain or a team in Italy or just a, a mid-table team I could see yeah. taking King. He's a decent option for yeah. relatively cheap. So they'd need a replacement. Mm. I mean, but to throw away, he'll be... Apart from that, apart from that, like Southampton, you could, but they're so poor. Mm. I worry it's going to be another Swansea. Brighton have already got in terms of strikers that he wouldn't get in, in front of the players they've got. He's he is definitely a a new. I think a Newcastle, Bournemouth, Palace, maybe we do have a bit of a love in with Palace and yeah. loaning them our players. But yeah, actually, um, he'd work because they play. They and wouldn't I think. Kind of wait. Where's Tammy Abraham from? <sighs> he is from Ends, so he'll fit in quite well. It worked for Loftus Cheek. No, it wasn't. No, it was not. I was shaking my head out. What are you shaking your head at? You saying ends? Yeah, that's the point I'm making. I said he's from ends. He's from Camberwell. <laughs> what? I'm. Not, I'm just making a point. I'm. I'm not being seriously going. Yeah, fam. He's from ends, fam. I am from Kent. I'm not going to sit there and say I'm doing that seriously, am I? Don't am know. I? No, maybe. Possibly. Thank I you. Don't know. Possibly. Right. You. You. You, you being a dick on purpose. No. Oh, good. Not. That's a good start. But, um. Beer. Yeah. I think it's possible. I think he needs another stint in the Premier League, similar to a lot of Sheik, as he said, mm. where he can actually show himself. Because, as I said 
the the run at Swansea was it wasn't the best, but at the same time that he wasn't getting games. Sometimes like Ayu, Jordan I was playing ahead of him. Bonnie wasn't, I don't think. Uh, Bonnie, what a beast he was. Uh, but yeah, so I think one oh, yeah. more stint. Person, what happened, what happened to Wilfred Bonnie? He's, he was, I think he's still there, he's, or he's, he's gone to he's, Qatar. He's, no, one he's, of the he's, he's still there. I know he's went down the championship, championship with them, but I, I, he's, he was so good, and now he's just yeah, told you. Oh, he's well, moved on loan at uh, Al Arabi in oh. Qatar. Oh, okay. I quite, I quite like Wilfred Bonnie. I liked him when he was that first thing at Swansea and City. I liked him when he was at Vitesse. He was good at Vitesse. Mm. I, reckon, I reckon if he hadn't gone to City, he'd have been a solid striker. Oh, yeah, he still. would have been. But he never got played at City because he's a fucking idiot. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to, to be honest... It's the same way Jovetic went and you had... Did they have Aguero Negredo who was actually performing well? And he was like third Al- or fourth no, choice. Alvaro, like, Alvaro, Al- uh, Alvaro... Alvaro... Aguero Negredo... Uh, Jekko. Jekko and Jovetic. Your fourth choice. What were you? <laughs> I don't understand. That. They, play, they played a four four two though. Didn't yeah, they? but they played Jekko and Aguero, or Jekko and Negredo, or Mate, Negredo and Jekko. Aguero. If we, if we, I, I, I think Jekko would have been sick. It would have been. I kind of missed the fact of that fact. We would, we could have signed Edin Jekko. Mm. That would have been an awesome signing. But um, I mean, moving swiftly on. Leave us your thoughts on um, Tammy Abraham. Do you think that he could cut the mustard at Chelsea's as a first choice, maybe even a second choice? Obviously, Gonzalo Higuain. Do you think he should extend his loan? Obviously, that's another thing you have to talk about with that. Um, or do you think he should go out on loan in the Premier League? Tammy Abraham, that is, because we can't loan out a player we've got on loan. But moving swiftly on. Listen. Talking of, uh, oh no, that wasn't going to work. It was a comment I was going to make on that one. Never mind. Yeah. I was going to make a segue if we talked about some things there, but it doesn't really matter. Wait, would, would you want to make that segue again? What, no, what it was going to be talking about changes in the game if there are changes made. Because he mentioned, sorry, I didn't mention making three or four changes for this game. It, it works, but it is very loose. Oh no, it would have worked if, if we talked about the changes being made. Talking of changes. I mean, to be fair, yeah, we do need to talk about that because he did make some changes. Oh no, so, no, he will be. Right? He said it also. He, he said he will be making, changes. making uh, okay. three or four. You can tell this is a very professional outfit right here. Um, anyway. Moving on, yeah. Uh, he's been making changes, three or four. We've already established we think Loftus Cheek will come in. Callum has to potentially, obviously, with Emerson Hazard. Still injured. Not injured, sorry. It went off early. Could be injured. Could be, well, or not. I don't think, like, he, I don't he, think he'll probably play. Shattered. He'll probably play, but do what he yeah. did against Tottenham. Come uh, Especially with a free new up. Emerson, we'll Emerson, yeah, Emerson will start. I really hope he does. Um, but I mean, it's going to be interesting. But obviously, leave your thoughts. Who do you think the predicted level is going to be? Well, we're going to do that in the next part of the show. Obviously, we like to do that. We like to talk shit. And uh, basically, kind of guess the predict the eleven. That's what a predicted lineup is, anyway. But um, speaking of changes, Scott Parker's going into the dugout, replacing old Claudio Ranieri, replacing my granddad. <coughs> is Ranieri yeah. right? Ranieri is like every stereotypical Italian man. If you're old enough to remember, do you remember that old Batoli advert? The the no. butter. There was an old man with a dog, and he'd ride his bike down the cobbled streets, which are really hilly, much like where my family's from, which is why I really like that advert. And he goes sit in a cafe, right? He get out his paper, so it could be it could be Gazetta della Sport, Corriere della Sport. Uh, I don't know what other ones there are. There's one called Il Corriere, I think. I think that's the like the their version of the Sun. They're the only three I know really. Uh, and he'd sit there and he'd have his espresso and he'd have a trilby and he'd go to sleep on his seat and the dog would be there and then they go Patoli, Italian butter, because everyone knows that Italy's amazing. And we've already established that Italians are very passionate, so uh, I don't know there's got lots of stuff going on there. But um, he's much like that. I, I could really see Claudio Ranieri sitting down, right, with his glasses on, and going, how much I love my players, I love the pizza, I love this, I love that, the dilly ding, dilly dong, hey, wake up, well, hello. Um, that didn't happen so much at Fulham, did it? No, it didn't, unfortunately, but that's not really his fault, if you ask me. I think, you know, he's a very, he is a good manager, but... Yeah, I think, I think, I think he, he was going into a, he, he was going into a situation where he, he, he was no win. Like, you look at some of the players they've got there, they're just not good enough. Uh, the recruitment's been... Tony Khan's had a bit of a nightmare this year. <laughs> I can't, like, it's odd, because I, I was talking to Jack from uh, Fulhamish uh, earlier, and it's like, they made some good signings, like, for the most part. Like they made like Seri as we mentioned, it, like he was wanted by the likes of I think it was United. I, I think we were linked with him at one point, and I think City were like some top clubs. I think Juve were at one point. Um, he he's decent. Uh, Fosu Mens is decent. He's shown in the Premier League he could do it before. Uh, same with Mawson. I don't know, obviously he got relegated, but he was solid for um, uh, Swansea. Uh, 
He was. I really don't think he was all that. He was. I thought he was good for Swansea. Um, I mean, literally. and then Vieto, Schürrle, but they, they, but there's some of them like Lazar, Mark, Mark, Mark of it. <laughs> <laughs> then they've got next to Zambo and you got. Uh, I, 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 th- I thought it was. I thought it was. Oh no, you said they were two different players. Then. No, they are. I've no, never no, heard and, of him. Andre Frank, Zambo and Gisa. He played for Marseille. Um, he's who, call, who looks at a kid and calls him that as well as having those middle names and that last name as well? He's Flipping, called, no, it's a, like some of the <laughs> Nord Vite. Yeah, that Nord- worked for West Ham, didn't it? Brian, not good <laughs> enough. <laughs> Brian. Uh, Fabrizio, no. Rico was all right. It's severe, and they've um, ruined him. But I mean, it's like they've got they, those are three keepers that could all be first choice, and there's one, two, there's three of them. Yeah. Like, what, what was the point in that? I mean, look at the wages. Right? I know Rico's on loan, but they've bought him, so that's like Premier League wages. Dennis Adoy, like, he's, 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 he's crap. Dreadful. I'm a better defender than Dennis Adoy, and that says a lot. Uh, Callum Chambers. <laughs> he's to be fair. When I saw that, I laughed. He's been all right. He's playing in midfield mm-hmm. somehow. I don't know. I don't know how that's happened. Watched, watched him try and translate that into the entirety of like next season when he's Arsenal loaned out. Against I say he's been else. decent. He's probably going to like make about a million errors in Sunday. Or, or he'll be really, really good. Yeah. Uh, Tim Ream. Never, like. You've never heard of him. <laughs> he plays centre back, doesn't he, Le Marchand? Or him. he can play centre back or left back. He was he was oh. part of the Nice squad that did really well. Him and Ser- <laughs> <laughs> Mate, this team is mad. Fossi Fossi Mensa, Mensa, I said it was all right. uh, Alfie Mawson, you can take him or leave him. I'm I'm not a massive fan of Alfie Mawson. I don't really think he's all that. I, I, think, really I think he was all right for Swansea. I, yeah, I think he, he, right. he was simply for me. He was, and I know this is going to get twisted. So please, comment section, hold your keyboards. He you was can't sim- hold, I mean, you can. But but hold you, you, calm yourself. He was similar in a way. Let me explain to Maguire for uh, for Hull. Let me explain. Um, he okay. always he always looked like he was just a bit too good for them. That he could move on. The only problem is he's moved to Fulham, and it's the same level, if not worse. If he if he moved to somewhere like a Newcastle, like a Bournemouth, a bit of a step up, then it might have worked. But he's gone to Fulham, who, if anything, are worse. So it's not worked. Maybe he just liked the colour white. Maybe he's a white supremacist. Go to go, don't twist that. I'm not saying Newcastle's Alfie Mawson's a white supremacist. Go to Newcastle. Yeah, Newcastle because it's like and it's a better night out than Fulham. Uh, I mean, yeah, it really depends. I mean, it depends what you're after. If you're after like really classy bars, uh, you know, where people are going to be like talking about Brexit and politics, people are going, and spending fifty yeah, quid to so, just get in exactly. And so they go, mm, yes, oh, this wine's really nice. If you want a proper night out, dark fruits. Freezing cold, and somehow I don't understand how northern girls go out and don't wear a coat. How do you do it? I'm actually quite impressed. Uh, it's, it's you want that? You want shots? You want to spend fifteen quid on a night out and get absolutely slaughtered? Newcastle is the one, Alfie. Go there, and he's from Barnsley. So, <laughs> oh listen. God, I think that. he'll have a great night out. Is it, can you imagine him at the back going, "Hey, up, lad? Yeah, can you cover that right def- hand side?" He definitely looks like the type of person who's getting in a fight. Oh yeah, Alfie Mawson definitely gets in a fight. I reckon he's he's your mate on a night out who like if a mate a guy looks at him funny, he definitely punches him inside of the head. <laughs> like, can I have your drink? No, you can't, lad. Fuck off. And they just like cave his head in. But we'll move on to their midfield. Uh, and obviously their squad is is ridiculous. I don't. This is why I don't blame Claudio Ranieri. Ryan Sessegnon, obviously, if you've seen the video, you know my thoughts on that. Uh, uh, right. Massively like, overhyped. I think he's overhyped. Oh, no, he is overhyped, but I think that. Unfortunately, I don't think he's been given too much of an option. At least, like of a of a not an option, a chance under Ranieri. Mm. He just wasn't used. Like he used Brian instead. Who, as I said, he's just not Premier League level. Mm. I mean, if you look, and you look at the rest of the squad. To be fair, their forward line is good. Their Barring forward line. Oh yeah, I'd never see. I've never heard of him. He played for Bastia, and then they got just before they got um, bankrupt. In yeah, you 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 know loads of weird facts about random. Um, but yeah, like you look at their front line. If you just take them take them out of being Fulham, you got Mitrovic, solid uh, Premier League striker. Uh, he says I said Babel, who actually at thirty whatever he is looks about forty something. Um, <laughs> he 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 looks like the guy who tries to sell you gear in the back of a club. <laughs> he's actually like he's pl- he's performed well for them. Coke. He was performing well for Besiktas, I believe. He's he performed well for Holland still. He's all right. Then you go down. Scherler, we've seen he's performed for some of the top, some of the top clubs, like, like not not the Bayern Munich, but Chelsea. some of the top clubs in the top club. um, Germany. Performed Chelsea. decently at Chelsea. Chelsea. Um, 
He's Chelsea. got the ability. Vieto performed well at Valencia, I believe. I think he. You perform. believe? I believe. I know Atletico Madrid didn't go well. I think of uh, Valencia it did, and I think of Sevilla it did. He did. And yeah. then and then he and he's like he's performed okay, yeah. like in in the last few games, I believe. I think. Right. But, should I tell you, you know, what I thought Ryan Babel looks like the guy, a guy that sells you coke at the back of the club. Why? It's because he looks like one of the characters in San Andreas in Grand Theft Auto. I've forgotten which one it was. I think it's the main. He, he looks a bit like the main character. What's his name? Oh yeah, I can't CJ remember. in it or something I like think that. So, something like that. He looks remember. like CJ. But yeah, it's it's just it's. I don't really understand it. Don't yeah, I mean yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, the, the, Lazar Markovic is still a bad. If you if you want to talk about banter signings, Lazar Markovic is that. Oh, I can't believe they signed him. Watch him score against us on Sunday. But um, if he scores a screamer, I might cry. But this is you look at the recruitment here. That squad is on paper. That is like staying up in the prem. Yeah, that's a, that's a that's lower that's lower half, but that is. That's a similar level to, I'd say... Bournemouth. Uh, yeah, knows. a Bournemouth, or uh, maybe just below a Newcastle in terms of just squad. Obviously, mm. form comes into it as well. I, I mean, to be fair, if you look at it statistically... It's, it's any, any, anyone, yeah, but anyone from Bournemouth down could go down. So it's kind of... The, anybody there... Oh, behave. Bournemouth are going down. No, they're not. But I'm saying, mathematically, I'd say those yeah, are the ones... But... I mean, Le- Leicester, West Ham, Everton, that lot, they're all solid. You say that, but you could put Wolves and Watford in that, then. No, because that's 40 points. No, no, 54 fine. points more than Everton. Yeah, but four points makes a big difference. And they've hit the magic 40. When you hit 40 points, you stay up. It's as simple Honestly, as that. It's, it's between Carl and Southampton. I, I'd, I'd, as much as Maybe we, Burnley. As much as we love Freddie from the ugly inside, I think I'd rather Southampton go down because I want a good night out. That's cool. That's kind of... See, I like to think of it not, not just for the football, but for the whole weekend. Oh, yeah, the away day. Like... Southampton, oh oh. yeah, it's all right, but you know, it's meh. I'm, I've been to Southampton. I've been, go, I, we didn't go out. The no, city I've, been, I've been around there since I was a kid. I think that's another reason why I'm just a bit like I don't, I'm really not bothered by it. Whereas Cardiff, like you know, yeah, you, you go get mental, you know, have a great time, and uh, yeah, I think that's that's a better shout. But I, I, you know, I think it's gonna be interesting. Newcastle just never go down. Newcastle stay out forever, please. Until Benitez leaves. To be honest, I think they're staying up. Yeah, I'd be interested to see how they bring up. Plus, it looks like their recruitment's going a bit better. But yeah, I mean, but I mean, we, we've kind of gone off topic there. Yeah, but we're talking bit. about no. Parker and uh, Ranieri. Parker <laughs> and, and so, yeah, Scott, you got Parky Park Park and Dilly Ding Dilly Donger. Yeah, I, I think I think Park is another situation where it's a thankless task, but I think they've gone the right route with it in terms of mm. giving it to someone who's in the club rather than going and getting a, another Magat. Christ alive, that might be. The, I I genuinely think that's up there with the, one of the worst managerial appointments ever. <laughs> It was quite good at the time. I thought because Magat was a proven manager. He's a mentalist. Yeah, and he, he won leagues doing it. He won the Bundesliga. Fair enough. Yeah, right. that's, that's 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 a different league. As as, pe- as many people like to say, that it's it's not the same. No, obviously it's not the same. But I'm saying he's probably yeah, has a proven track record because it worked. Because he won a league being a nutcase. That's fair. I mean, that's that's that anyway. But yeah, I don't. Know. I, I just I, I wonder how it's going to go I, I think he's been given a thankless task and I think to be fair I think uh, Jack Corelli and I think it could mm. be another Darren Moore situation I mean yeah I think if you want to see that obviously check out Jack's uh, preview and all that with us there'll be a link coming up now but the camera's about to run out again so we're going to swap over it's half time pause it here and we'll see you in two minutes So, welcome back. Hope you've had your half-time oranges and uh, you've got yourself another cup of tea, maybe. There's nothing in this sports bar. I literally only drink water out of this mug. I, I, it's, I don't understand who get mugs as big as this and drink, like, tea from them. I'd love that. Coffee. But it's massive. That's good. It's yeah, but, more tea. Yeah, it's more tea, but I know how many sugars you have and you're going to get diabetes. Yeah, I probably will. And no, but that's not fair because I'm the fat one and I'm yeah. always going to be the people like, oh, you're so overweight. I eat healthier than you. I have vegetables in my flat. He refuses to eat vegetables. I don't. Carrot, when was broccoli, the last time? Cauliflower. All of which you didn't eat when we went out. Bollocks. You did not eat the carrots. Yes, did I did. Not, no, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. You did not eat your yes, carrots. Did. You did not eat your broccoli. Yes, I fucking did. Mate, you're the one with the kids. How the fuck am I having this conversation <laughs> with you? I am not your dad. Oh, mate. Listen. I, uh, he's a nightmare. He is. But, moving swiftly on. Uh, um... We need to go through it. Obviously, you were talking about uh, managers of previously. Yeah. Before the camera ran out about managers and... How maybe we didn't think this was Ranieri's fault, and we kind of uh, looked at Scott Parker 
And uh, I think he's a solid replacement at the end of the season. Obviously, ex Chelsea as well, as playing for Fulham and Tottenham and Charlton. It's quite ironic, is uh, this is probably more risk, uh, sorry, more risk free than the Ranieri appointment. Is and it? that one was commented as risk free. They're fucking 10 points clear of the relegation zone. It, they've got no expectations until the end of the season. They're 10 is, points clear of the relegation zone, sorry, are they? In the relegation, of getting out, I mean. Yeah. Clear, clear getting really out. About, They've, they've got no expectations. They're three points ahead of Huddersfield, and Huddersfield hadn't won a game in 18 games until against Wolves. That's how dreadful it is. The only cons- Hang on, Huddersfield got spanked 5 0 by us, and they've still got a bigger goal difference. <laughs> oh, this, is, oh, this is about as risk free as you. They might, they might as well have signed Alan Pardew, for Christ's sake. Honestly. <laughs> This is about as risk free as it gets. Oh, mate. They're on Derby levels right now. <laughs> oh, what, well, Derby got 14 points, wasn't it? That was there. It was, was <laughs> Something it, like that, but they're on that level. It was ni- no, 19 was the record. <laughs> is it bad? I don't think Fulham will get that. I think, you know, I think Fulham will get 19 points. I uh, know, Derby, Premier League, record. Um, big, Premier League points. Slightly, slightly off topic. Uh, Lowest the eleven. Probably, eleven. Okay, now they're both all right. Okay, no, never mind. But um, but yeah, I, th- I think this is low risk. But getting back a little bit on track, talking of new managers. Yes, indeed. Uh, we had a conversation off camera beforehand about yes. the new manager bounce. Uh, if it's a thing, I think it is. And it, it does it work? It's stuff like that. It's a little bit more in depth. But that's the basic of it. Yeah. And I, what's your opinion on it? Because I don't mind this. I can't remember what it was. I'm, in the, I'm, I'm on the fence. I, I kind of feel it's more of a myth than people like to let on. Mm. I think I think it really depends. There is a level of freshness that comes in when you have a new manager. But at the same time, is that level of freshness susceptible to an increase in points? Yes. But is it... Su- Do you know what I mean? It's just, is, it, is it as effective as people like to talk about mm. it? Is it is? I, I think it works, but I think it has to depend on a few things. Okay, give me some examples of how it works. So, Solskjaer, there, there's two obviously. immediately as a Chelsea fan. Uh, that's this season with Solskjaer. We've yeah. seen it. Uh, anyone that, like, that, that's one of the biggest examples in recent time I can think of. And the other one is Di Matteo when yeah. we're on the Champions League. Um, but I, as I said, I think that comes down. Goose. As I said, I think it does come down because like, if you look at those those two examples, there is we we have thought of another example with Zidane, yeah, coming in when they won the Champions League. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it depends on a few things. Like if you look at the people who came before them, Mourinho for Solskjaer and AVB for Di Matteo, yeah, you can tell the players didn't want to play under them. At least that's what it looks from the outside. They just look uninterested, and I think that's the thing. I, I think it comes down to number one, the players. Uh, so basically the team so if mm-hmm. you if you end up taking over a big team it can work quite well I think I think that's when it works most of the time quite well mm-hmm. and it all the manager it all depends on manager because I think say for example the Solskjaer job I'm going to bring it up because it's been brought up a lot say Paul Lintz went in there <laughs> the fact, oh my he'd have got sacked by now I guarantee you he'd have got Paul, sacked by now I can't believe Paul Lintz said he could do a better job than Solskjaer but yeah I, I think that's the thing I think it all depends who goes in because like Solskjaer was a perfect fit Di Matteo was a perfect fit Zidane was a perfect fit at the time we've seen uh as we've got more examples, uh, you can't see it on our laptop on the laptop in front of uh, when it didn't work. <laughs> Let's read. <laughs> and, uh, funnily enough, the first four all Fulham. Ironically enough, <laughs> four of what was Les Reed Fulham as well. No, he's Charlton, wasn't he? But yeah, that he was that was the possibly I said worst manager. I disagree with what you said about Jukanovic because well, I say that in terms of he did work in the end, but I'm talking the bounces when it initially goes in there. When he initially replaced Simons, I don't. It wasn't working quite as well. They were they were looking a bit better, but not quite. The level they mm. were last season when they were winning everything. Mm. Last season, then they they well, I say winning everything. He looked like a hitman. He scared the shit out of me. Um, yeah. Um, but that's what I mean. Like when when I say the new management when they first go in the first about ten games. Yeah. Say. So it was a bit. It was improving a little bit, but it wasn't really anything major. Mm. And then obviously it improved later on. Yeah. Mühlenstein was Mühlenstein. I laughed at him because you knew as soon as he came as what director of football or something or or like head of um, technical well, yeah. or something. Yeah, something like that. You he, you knew he was angling for Martin Yell's job from the beginning. The way he was, like, I could do a better job. I could do this. I could do that. Blah blah blah. And then when he got exactly the same points tally in ten games, I just started laughing. Idiot. That was a waste of time. Then he went to manage Angie, I think. 
the one I can't say the last thing of. But chaka laka, chaka laka. Um, okay. And then, as we mentioned, Magat was just 16 points from 10 games. It was brilliant. <laughs> and then, obviously, dilly ding, dilly dong. Yeah, Ranieri. Uh, and as we said, let's read. They're, so it, it can work, but I think uh, that's the thing. I think yeah. it all depends on who you're getting in. Like, for example, I know like Jack mentioned it, that he wouldn't have wanted this. And I think other Fulham fans probably would be the same. But if they got someone like Allardyce, it probably could have worked. Because he's mm. a very defence manager, cares about defence first. And he's got a record of never exactly. being relegated from the Premier League. Exactly. Which would probably have helped you not get relegated from the Premier League. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I think it depends on the, the manager that's going into the team and the team overall. I think, uh, yeah. yeah. But I think it does work out in, in general. There are just a few examples when it doesn't. But that's I think the, the new manager bounces... It, I think we you've you've given loads of lower like parts of the Premier League where it hasn't worked. When you've gone to the upper echelons, there has to be examples where it doesn't work as well. Here you go, Tim Sherwood. Long term, he he got the bounce, he got the job, and he was shit. Yeah. What? This thing, like, so you're, so you say long term it didn't work. Well, no, I mean, you get, you get the new manager effects. Oh yeah, we got a new manager. It's working really well. With first ten games, yeah, it's great. But what's the point of doing that? If six months down the line, you're going to sack it. That's fair. I think to long, be fair, that's, yeah. that's, the, that's the Chelsea way. Yeah, no, but if you, if you go, if you go long, long, long term, yeah, like long, I, I'd say you bring them in. They last a year, or just over. That's now our long term manager. As much as people are saying, I'm oh, being on a fucking nutcase here. Managers don't last over eighteen months in the Premier League now. Statistically, that is that is that is the lifespan. Are you, are you talking manager. all clubs or are you just talking clubs okay. in general? It's eighteen months. So, like, I think I think there's a, a examples where it's just non-existent. It didn't work. And I think that you know we are the new manager bounce for me is almost redundant because if you look at how it operates, it it just it's, the managers get sat in the end anyway. I I think it works in, I think it has to work in some cases like for a top club I think it's a pointless exercise because mm. un, unless it's a Solskjaer-esque appointment mm. or it's a like a Klopp-esque appointment yeah etc unless there is a project to be built for Chelsea it's a waste of time it's yeah. just a waste of that's time that's why I think that's kind of um, like if we, if we, if for, a, for a lower uh, lower table club like a Fulham I think that new manager bounce is needed just to get them out of yeah. the trouble they're in and then as of next season they can try mm. and progress I think that's when it's how it yeah. the split is realistically though if if you were obviously we'll, we'll, this is all hypothetical because Sorry's not going to get sacked if Sorry got sacked and a caretaker manager was to come in who would you get and who would you want I wouldn't say Lampard. No, he's not ready. No. I wouldn't say Terry. Zinedine not. Zidane. We'll get Zinedine Zidane. No, we won't. I don't want him anyway. Joe, um, Joe Cole? No, because he's never managed before. Not now he hasn't. I, that's the thing. I, I, there's, I'd almost be tempted to see if... Oh God, no, I'm not saying it again. Um, I'd be tempted to see if Di Matteo would come back. He probably wouldn't, but... Someone like that. I, do you know who I actually I'd give it to for six months? Just because why not? No, Hull it. Hull it. Yes. For six months. Uh, yeah. God, he's been out of management for a while. I yeah. think. But well, if you can do that, I'll just go all out. Go with Glenn Hoddle. Glenn Hoddle's actually a decent show. Obviously, he's not well at the moment. But yeah, no, but that's that's obviously. I, I think that would be unwise from his perspective. Mm. But yeah, I, someone like that, <coughs> just someone that knows the club, but isn't going to be a a Lampard or a, a Terry or a Steve Holland or a Paul Clement. Yeah, oh Christ. Paul Clement's available if you want to get him. No, no. Okay, cool. No worries. Coach, brilliant. Absolutely love him. Manager, no. That's thank you. that's another thing though. Like there are loads of coaches that go out there and then become managers and then do nothing and are crap. Alan Irvine, <coughs> he was dog. He was rubbish. I can't argue with that. I'm trying. To, I, there definitely others. Not the Pearson. Was he a coach and then became manager, or was he just a manager? I think he was just a manager. He, he certainly. He always wore tracks, so That's why I think he's a Nigel, coach. Was Nigel, Nigel Pearson was the one that strangled? Um, was it MacArthur? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that sounds about right. Uh, he was a nutcase. Who else? Apparently, he was quite a nice guy though. 
Mm. But uh, but yeah, I mean, Mullenstein. There you go. Mullenstein. <laughs> oh, mate, he was. He, he was a coach. I'm so, he was a. I I never liked Rainer Mullenstein. I I thought he was a bit of a dick. <laughs> he just he just he he felt like the baddie in all the like kids TV shows. Come in, I'm going to make this complete and make it better. And then at the end, when he's told the guy, like James Bond, who's on the laser, yeah. getting the laser going up his legs, as he's telling him his plan, it doesn't work out because, like, the PFA and FA and CIA and the UN decide to find his secret hideout uh, underneath Craven Cottage. And then, you know, he gets taken to football manager hell prison thing and then yeah you've I've, lost your mind I've, I have lost my mind I have a tendency to do that especially when I'm tired but um, yeah listen that's your thoughts so leave us your thoughts on the new manager bounce uh, down below and uh, we are going to move on now to the preview uh, so we will see you in a minute so now it's time for your actual preview of the game so Philip Three points. If it's not three points, I'm seriously questioning what the hell is going on. I love the way you tried stuff. Thank you. Say. You know, monetization went quite a long time ago. Oh, okay, no worries. Yeah, so I, th- I think it's kind of because don't don't worry about it. No you, worries. You can't say fuck. Okay. And shit. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, we're fucked if we don't. If we if we yeah. don't um, get uh, three points, I oh, Christ. Do you reckon any Fulham players against the Chelsea squad? Yeah. Squad, yes. First eleven, no. Absolutely not. Rice is young. I'll take. Yeah. This is the thing. Like, there's, there are four players I'd take. Go on. Bettinelli, backup keeper. But we've got Big Willie. Yeah, but he's about 40. Yeah, and he's, gonna, he's going to need to retire sometime soon. No. Unfortunately, he's going no. to need to retire sometime soon. No. So, Bettinelli, eventually. Uh, I'd take. Mitrovic as a backup striker. Yes. I'd take Seri as a backup to Kante, and I only say that because, as I said with, with Abraham earlier, I sometimes, in certain cases, I look past the season they had. Like, he played so well for Nice in a, in a, like, they, yeah, in a, playing under quite a good manager, in my opinion. Mm. Um, and he, he played well, and as I said, he was linked with some big teams. I think going to Fulham just wasn't the right fit, so I'd be tempted mm. to take him as a, just as a, a backup to Kante if we ever needed it. Yeah. Uh, and then there was one other I think Sessegnon I think there might be one other but yeah Sessegnon mm. uh, just as a, a backup left back Sessegnon no actually we don't even need him we I, think, I still take him yeah is it Sessegnon has the doy down the left hand side and the right hand side for Vitez Arnhem Christ <laughs> they get them a Charlie Musonda treatment <laughs> oh my god never is play Musinho oh let me delete everyone off Instagram um, but yeah, no, I think that's it. I, 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 I just personally think that... The only one that's, the only one that's sniffing the, the starting level is Mitrovic. And that's, that's, that's barely a sniff. Really? At the, at the minute. I say that because he's, he's, he's our striker. I say that because he's Warren's our striker and Sarri's in charge. And as we've seen with Jorginho and with Higuain elsewhere in the season, he... They have a loving. Yes. The men um, are as well. So he'd play in like... The Malmos against the Malmos in the Europa League. If we're in the Europa League, God help us if we are. Um, but yeah, or in in the small cup games. But that's what I mean. He'll, it, that, and then the Bettinelli if he's our backup keeper, maybe again. But that's about it. Yeah, I personally think Bettinelli's not all that. I didn't I want him. I never wanted. Be- when did yes, I say you, I yes, wanted Bettinelli? No, I know for a fact you said you wanted Bettinelli as a backup keeper. I've never yes, said that. Yes, you have. I know no. that for a fact you have. When no. we when I first no. like the first few months of knowing you, you definitely no. said that. I I swear. On, I swear on Cody's life. Well, we better go get Cody and start killing him, mate, because I definitely, you definitely didn't say said it. that. I know that for a fact. I know that for a fact. I didn't yes, say it. Did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You can say all you want. I think I remember what I said. You don't remember what you had breakfast this morning, mate? Yes, I do. What do you have? Sausage roll, because we were in a rush. I got it from Wenzel's at Baker Street. Fuck you. I know what I have for breakfast. <laughs> Look at me living a healthy, balanced lifestyle. Yeah. But yeah, apart from that, there's no one. That, no one's getting close. It's Fulham. Yeah, I mean it's true. But I, I spent I think... 29 million on Zambo and Gisa. I'm never going to let that go. I'm never going to let that go. They spent 29 million, 29 million whole English pounds on some guy that barely played for Marseille and is absolutely shite. Hold on, what? what hold on. So what? Actually, I'm going to check if it was nine. Give, give me a second. How, how many names has he got? Uh, four. He's double arrow. 
Gobble barrel first name, which I don't understand, and then a two singular names. Andre names. Frank Zambo and Gisa. Yes. When you said that to me, I thought that was two separate players. <laughs> don't blame me. I was like, who's Andre Frank and who's Zambo and Gisa? I've never heard of these guys. Frank. Frank. Mm. This is going well. It is going very well. <laughs> so, yeah, Andre shut Frank. up, man. Don't tell me shut up. Oh, never mind. He played 79 games for, for Marseille, but still. Right. See you guys, Scott saying. He, he, he never, he never played a game. Sorry, he never scored a goal. Never played it. He never scored a goal. Maybe he's a defensive midfielder. He's not a very good defensive midfielder, clearly. <laughs> got fucking thirty-seven goals conceded. How was he? <laughs> you got Callum Chambers playing defensive midfield. That would be why. Christ. Now, but I that's embarrassing. The centre backs getting above you in the, in the place. But yeah, like, that's just embarrassing. But that boy, you say. Like that's that's something like. And you bought Markovic for Christ's sake. Didn't How embarrassing whoa, 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 whoa. They bought him. Oh no, it was a free transfer, but you, you have to pay him wages. Imagine paying him wages. <laughs> Christ. Imagine playing him. Christ. But that, that's the sort of club they are. It's like, you, you go out and buy, or loan, sorry, Sherlock, you go and get Seri, and then you also go and get Samo and Giso and Markovic. It's just well, Markovic will stay. Sherla will cancel his line. Well, Sherla's going. Well, let, Sherla's going. Rico's going. Vieto's going. Sarah. Babel's going. Seri will go. Seri will go. Mitrovic will go. <laughs> they've got no strikers. Oh, they've got Aite. They're all good. <laughs> Why are you the shit out of Fulham? Because <laughs> it's easy to. Like, I don't no, want to. Full like, full, it's like ripping the shit out of your, like... Your cousin's got cerebral palsy. Like that's not <laughs> fair. You don't do that. <laughs> no. You don't. You don't do that. It's just I don't want to. To be honest, like it's I don't like the only club where he take fun take, ripping the shit out of is Tottenham. And <laughs> Tottenham lost to us and Gordon doesn't pick the club. Um, <laughs> and, and Liverpool just because their fans are a bit meh um, for the yeah. most part. But but they're just so easy to rip the shit out of because of their situation. It's, they've done what QPR you remember when QPR came a, f- a few years ago and they bought everyone well, they, they wasn't quite as bad they, they bought and then they three Mark- keepers in one window they bought Julio Cesar um, Rob Green and somebody else then they brought in Jose Bazingua <clears throat> they renewed Adel Tarap's contract to gave him like 200 grand a week or something like that Jesus and then, then they gave Mark Hughes the job that's, that's gone well that was funny uh, but yeah, I, I, if we Clint, and, uh, Clint Hill and Richard done this, do two centre backs. <laughs> I'd have given up. Uh, if you are like ripping the shell off. That's fair. They're the cousin you hate. <laughs> <laughs> they're like the one whose parents oh, give them everything and they're just dicks. And they still manage to fuck up everything they do. Yeah, sound, sounds about right. Yeah, but I, as I go back to this game, if, if we don't. Get, I think you said it. Uh, I think Jack kind of said. I might have touched on. It, I can't remember. But if we don't get at least three, possibly four goals, I'm gonna be disappointed. Yeah, I mean, this needs to be a mauling. Like I'm talking lion eating a deer type of mauling. You know, lions and deers don't kind I don't of care. A lion eating over. a gazelle. Then I'm talking. This needs to. In in order for. If so, I'm saying if this is a one 0 win, scrappy goal. That we could, I can't. Three points or three points. Obviously, I prefer us to batter them. Everyone deserves a good... They, everyone loves a good battering. No, grow up. I wasn't thinking anything. You, you were thinking... I actually wasn't thinking you're, you're so immature. But, it, yeah, we need to win. It, yeah. we, and yeah. uh, we will win. Well, I will. That's, that's a stupid thing to say, but I believe we you, will win. You remember this is going on the internet? Yes. Good point. I believe we will win. Uh, everything looks in our favour that we should win. It does. But, yeah. It needs to be three. It needs to be a hardest game, basically. Yeah, I think five, three or three to five is a, is a good shout. Uh, look, they're, they're the only team who conceded more goals than us, though. To be fair, <laughs> since this is the new year, but I, I, oh my god, that is so depressing. <laughs> that is so depressing. It's still funny as fuck. <laughs> Southwest London is where it's at. But I, look, I think it's just a case of we really need to. We just, we just need to get this right. We really do. Um, so I, I think you know it's kind of a case of. Let's just uh, take the rough of the smooth. That's really. I think we need to kick on. This is a game where you kick on. You get Drogo. Especially with Wolves coming up, uh, or Kiev, sorry, and then Wolves coming up. Wolves beat us in the away leg. Yeah. Um, apart from that, we don't talk about. Um, um, you mean you didn't even get to see it? Nope. Uh, fuck you, Minerva. Thank you. Um, Stupid shit car. Thank you. Um, have you had any news on that, by the way? N- that's about the millionth time you've asked me yeah, that. Yeah, because we don't have a car, Scott! 
It's nine o'clock at night. What? Can, do you want me to bring him now? Yeah, right. Go do it. What do I deal with? Um, do it. They might. Be, you leave a message. They're not going to be there. Hiya. The office is closed at five. I think. This is. Um, yeah. Stop getting me off track. Um, but yeah, I, for Wolves we need to push on, and then obviously we've got Everton and uh, Cardiff coming up, and I think those. Yeah, for this month, but especially with the run. With some of the games that Arsenal and United and Spurs have got, we need we need to get points. Yeah, no, I agree. and win big. So then goal difference and all that. Yeah, I think let's just let's just try and get across the line with that. Obviously, leave us your thoughts down in the comment section below uh, about what you think about this game. Obviously, make sure you check out the opportunity preview we did with Jack. Uh, there'll be a card there. Uh, so uh, yeah, we will see you in the next bit where we are predicting the eleven and giving you our score predictions. See you in a few. Right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to 100% Chelsea and welcome to your lineup announcement. No, your lineup, pre- lineup announcement's live. Yeah, I know, it's been a long day. Lineup prediction for uh, Chelsea versus Fulham or Fulham versus Chelsea at Craven Cottage, a 2 by 5 kickoff uh, on Sunday. So, who's the keeper? Because I, I, just saw, uh, I just saw someone came through saying that he's decided who, he's gonna be, who the keeper's going to be. Um, no. He confirms when Kepa will make his appearance. Let's see who it was. Uh, he will return. In the, oh, he's what you said. See, that's just clickbait titles. I disagree with that massively. Um, but yeah, I think it's Fulham because I think Ke- actually no, he could play against Kiev. I think it'll be Fulham. We got Wolves on the Saturday or Sunday? Saturday? No, Sunday it'll be, I think. Yeah, I think it's the 10th. Um, I probably will be uh, Kepper. Alright, so I've got Kepper and goal. Uh, left back, we're going to go for. Em- yeah, Emerson's got to start. He has to. I, I don't think it's like a case of he's got to start because of performances. I think just as, as a simple case of ro- just rotation. Mm. Give Al- uh, Alonso a rest, play Emerson. Yeah, I, I think Alonso's a second choice now. Yeah, I think he is. I think that he's a uh, he's definitely a player w- which uh, I, th- I think the healthy competition is good. Yeah, I think the fact that he's uh, playing Emerson and playing Alonso, I think it makes both of them perform better because instead of rewarding mediocrity, they're both being given the opportunity to try and prove who's better, yeah. who means they can hold down the starting berth in the big games. Um, I personally think. Yeah, Emerson will start. I think again he offers in the, on down that left hand side. As we move into, as we move into the midfield and the attacking line, I think he just offers that much more yeah. going forward. And as well as going backwards, he's that, just that much quicker, which means we can instead of leaving ourselves exposed at left back, we can definitely you know get into those, get back into those spaces and defend well. So I think Emerson will start uh, centre halves. David Luiz, Rudiger, that's nailed down. Right back is it an interesting one. It has to be. It's it's not even a case of. If anything else other than Dave needs a rest, mm. <laughs> he needs a rest. Two hundred and ten minutes of football in what was it? Four days, three days, something yeah. like that. He needs just to rest. And mm. it's the perfect game. It's against Fulham. It, or will he rest him against Kiev? I don't know. I'd probably play Zappacoff in both, to be honest. Yeah, I would as well. But yeah, I think I think and he's rest- he went down a cramp in the Tottenham game. Mm. <clears throat> But yeah, yeah, I think he, even though Zappacosta is a liability defensively, he needs to play just just because Dave needs to rest more than anything. I, I agree. I think I think he should come into the side. I think yeah, I, th- I, th- I think Zappacosta. I think going forward he'll offer a lot more, especially going up against that left hand side. I think that bit of pace from from Fulham might, you know, he, he might be able to get in behind the back. And considering they've got the worst goal difference in the league, I'd fucking expect him to, to be honest. Um, and he could cross. <laughs> it's pretty so thing can do. Yeah, so I think we agree that so. But so we're currently going Kepper and goal. Yep. Um, Emerson, Emerson, David Luiz, Rudiger, Zappacosta. Yep. Meh. Okay. You can definitely tell that we need to get some improvement uh, oh, fullbacks yeah, in the summer. So I think that's that's definitely first protocol. Cool. Yeah. Midfield is obviously a three. Is Jorginho going to play? Because again, he's also played 210 minutes. Yeah, but I think it's for George. For Jorginho, it's a little bit different. Whereas I thought I was going to burp or hiccup or something. Uh, I think with Jorginho, it's a little bit different. Where you see he there, his movement is a lot less than uh, uh, over the whole game than uh, Dave's. Yeah. So where Dave is 
basically tasked with getting up and down the wing like to defend and to attack the whole time I feel like mm. for Jorginho and parts he doesn't really have to do that as much if you look at some of his play sometimes in terms of where he stands it's a lot better it's, it's, it sort of requires a lot of his movement yeah. sometimes so I think he's not quite as who would replace him there though would Kovacic. it be Kovacic he's the only option we got so it'd be Kovacic and probably Loftus Cheek and Kante and Kante uh, two of those three I, I don't think it's terrible I think Kovacic is better, is better in that reduced I think, actually I'd be tempted to see Kovacic against this midfield because they've got so they've got Chambers as we said Sean Mikoseri yeah and Rob, either Kenny I don't know who else they play Kenny or someone else but Zamba he, and Gisa he won't play if Andre he, Frank if what he, a name if he plays and scores I'm going to look like such a mug you, um, you do look like a mug anyway that's cool I'm used to it now fine, but yeah, I think that me. whatever it is I think that's a midfield where he'll be able to take the ball past them quite easily yeah uh, apart from Seri they're not they don't strike me I haven't watched much film but they don't strike me as the most physical of midfields yeah they 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 did they really weren't when we were playing, playing them at our place you were there for that one weren't you no you weren't. so at our place they were very it was ghost like I'm not just talking the white shirts. I'm talking they were like just, just, just e- walking through. It was easy. Um, and then we need to have a bit more. I, I want us to really go to the races on this yeah. one. I, I think Kovacic I'd start. I'd, start, I'd rest Jorginho. He's been, it, it, honestly, he, against Spurs, uh, I thought it was great. Yep. Against City, he's been fantastic. Yes, he's on a run of form. However, I think he needs a rest. Yeah. I think Kiev again, I'd just go Kovacic in both. Or and then use Barkley in the. Uh, Kiev game, yeah, but I think it's kind of a case of you know I think that you know just needs to have we just need a bit more rotation, which I think is something that wears me sorry because he's not a massive fan of that. So are we going Jorginho or Kovacic. This isn't what we want. This is what we think. I go Jorginho. It's a safer bet. Yeah, okay. So Jorginho, Kante, and Loftus Cheek. I think Loftus Cheek's yeah. got stars. It's, it's Fulham, as we've said multiple times. It's yeah. it's not. It sh- I'm not going to say it's not. It shouldn't be a massive test. Mm. I like the Huddersfield game wasn't. It's a chance for him to show himself. Yeah, I think, yeah, definitely he's got to start. He's, he's the third man in midfield for me. Obviously, leave your thoughts down in the conversation below as we go through all of this. Um, your front three, Hazard came off. He's definitely starting. Mm. I think Giroud could start. You sure? Yeah, Higuain wasn't amazing. He is moving in the f- his, his movement is a lot better than what we're used to. We, we, we're used to... That's a shit. It's a matter of standing still. Yeah, I think we got that in the second half, but I think that's down to the fact he's 31, legs gone a little bit, kind of expected. Yeah. But I think his movement is a lot better. It's just, I don't know, sometimes, and I don't think this is down, this is the, that's the, I said this like before, that the Tottenham game, I felt sorry for Jorginho because the runs in terms of from the wide areas weren't being made, at least in the first half. Mm. It was poor. But that's the thing, I feel like the wide, like, the wide players aren't helping him as much. In some instances, yeah. but yeah, I think well, yeah. this could this could be a game where either Higuain starts and he actually he performs really well and gets a couple of goals, or Giroud starts. I think Higuain's the safer bet. Giroud starting yeah. your league. Uh, so Higuain, Hazard, right hand side, probably William. It's probably going to be William. I'd like it to be Hudson Odoi. Yeah, I think regardless of who starts, Hudson Odoi gets minutes. Regardless of who starts, he gets minutes. When would you bring him on? No one would bring him on. I don't know when he's going to come on. I bring him on after about fifty-five minutes, probably. Give him at least. Why, why is he not off. getting the minutes? Like, if if Sari says he's ready, and especially after that cup final, why is he not being given these minutes? I, Call me impatient. I, I take any answer at this point. Any, please. He had a Twix before kickoff. He's got a he dodgy was haircut. Masturbating in the the, the changing room. Like, why is he not getting game time? I, this we we talked about this. Like, I don't. I, Answers, please, because <laughs> yeah. I haven't got any at this point. I mean, yeah, I mean it's, it's it's redundant. I'm just I'm just not. I'm disappointed. I think this will be a game where he starts. He'll definitely come into the side. I think that Ruben Loftus Cheek is definitely going to be someone as well that's going to have a big influence on this game. Hopefully, stamp down his position as we've already said. Emerson, this is a big statement. I think yep. going forward as well, he's our first choice against the likes of Wolves and these teams that we do struggle against. <clears throat> he's definitely going to be the starter, um, and it would definitely be so much easier for us as a club if we could definitely just motivate these players just to take those those steps and you know they I think these young players definitely need to be given the opportunity and again we've addressed all of this in our video with Jack it was about um, if you haven't obviously I know I keep saying it uh, we did like Ryan Sessignon versus Hudson Odoi you know, who's got more potential who's going to go further who looks better as a player and that's something we're really excited to talk about 
Um, and obviously, we can do the opposition preview as well. But speaking of previews, for score predictions, and we'll round it off. Go on, mate. 5 0. Are you sure? Yes. Is that your final answer? Yes. Uh, let, let's not forget, it's slightly wrong in terms of the way it went, but I did say for the City game, penalties it went, it would go to. Yeah, but we lost. Yeah, but I yeah, got but we lost. penalties right. I got I, everything right. No, you didn't. Yes, it was No, 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 Sharp. Don't tell me Sharp. I did say, I'm your boss. I did say, Fuck I did say off. We won one, it was nil-nil, but it was a draw. <laughs> went to penalties, we just lost. So I'm going to say 5 now. You're going to go 5 now. 5 Okay, I'm going to go 3. Just, just to be safe. I, I, I just, I think if we score more than three, happy days. But three is yeah, the minimum basically. I'm expecting. Um, watch up score one. Let's go three one. Let's give them, let's give them a little bit of leeway. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's it. That is your match build up show for Fulham versus Chelsea. Five past two kick off on Sunday, the third of March. Obviously, we're going to be down there at Craven Cottage, uh, doing fan cams, doing all that good stuff. Let's be doing a vlog. Uh, one last thing we do want to say. Uh, obviously, if you've seen uh, Lawrence's preview, uh, it is his last video on the channel. Uh, and from everyone, um, he, I, obviously, when I came in and took over, um, Lawrence was the first person who came through the door with me, and he's been an absolutely massive asset to the channel. Uh, he's done so well. He's helped us out so much on many occasions. He saved our skin as well. Um, and honestly, his previews and reviews, they will, they will be missed. Um, but obviously, if you want to go check him out, head across to his channel. It's on the uh, sidebar on the main page of 100% Chelsea. Uh, but, you know... It's uh, everyone moves on. Yep. Lawrence felt like they need to do so, and uh, credit to him because he's going to do really well. I'm, yeah. you know, I'm, re- I'm really proud to uh, work with him, and uh, you know, help build. He's helped to be a massive part of helping build this channel to where it is now, and uh, now it's on the push for 100,000 subscribers, which is a bit cool. So I'm real, but uh, listen, anyway, you guys have all been helping with that. If you want to help us hit that target of 100,000 subscribers, obviously make sure you hit that you know, subscribe button down there. Uh, obviously also make sure you hit the notification bell and uh, obviously make sure you subscribe to 100% Chelsea and all that good stuff. Um, as well as checking out all our socials down below as well and you know Snapchat Instagram is always very active now on match day so if you want to get hold of Dom or me make sure you check that out uh, and uh, yeah listen guys thank you very much for watching take care God bless and we will see you later thank you Scott thank you very much bye bye Literally, it wasn't even cut. It wasn't even cut. You know that's going in, right? Yeah, that's, you know that's the second time I fired, right? No. Fired earlier, I went like that.